Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to my studio. It's a lot of people's dream to be able to just pack up their studio, all the gear they need and take off to some amazing tropical place like this in order to write music. Today I'm going to show you how to do that and everything you need to write commercial quality professional music for film and television is in this bag. Let's set things up. And there you are, in literally less than five minutes, you're up and running and um, ready to start recording. So let me talk you through um, the gear bit by bit. Um, first of all, I'm using uh, a MacBook Pro, um, which is a quad-core processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, the price of MacBook Pros is very high, um, and you may well be better off uh, if your um, door runs on a PC looking at a PC laptop. So if you're running um, Cubase or Reaper or, or, or something like that. Um, because for a like-for-like like, um, um, system, you're probably paying uh, £1,000, best part of $1,500 more to have the Mac rather than the PC. And you're limited to 16 gigabytes of RAM. And RAM is a big deal for mobile um, um, composers. Whereas on a, um, a PC, you can get 32 or 64 gigabytes of RAM in, in a laptop, which will give you an, an loads more headroom to load up a much bigger template um, while you're working you know, somewhere glamorous and gorgeous like this. But more realistically, it's probably going to be um, in a hotel room or something like that. So I would, if you are going to do a lot of traveling um, and you do work on uh, a door which will also run on a PC, look at that as a possible alternative. Um, the imp um, important stuff is um, having all your libraries with you, which you need to keep on um, a solid state drive, this little SSD here. Um, it's a one terabyte SSD, um, though if you need more space than that to keep your main libraries on, it is now the case that a two terabyte SSD is less expensive than two one terabyte SSDs. And for a mobile rig, it's much easier to use a single drive. I've got this uh, mounted inside an Inertech um, housing, which then plugs in using USB 3, and it works absolutely great. I've got all my main libraries on there, uh, and I don't keep it on the internal drive in the, on the machine, um, because if you've got an SSD as your main drive on the machine, it's you're going to be running out of space and you want to be able to take this off and add new libraries and clone it and you know, all kinds of other things. So I would recommend using an external SSD. Um, you then need a, a really important part of all this kit is this, the keyboard. Um, because if you're traveling around, you can't really be taking a massive great 88 note keyboard with you everywhere. So you need a, a small keyboard, but a lot of the small keyboards only have like an octave and a half. So they're great for playing sort of a single top line. This Korg micro key has three octaves um, and then it's got a little um, up and down um, transpose button here. So you can go, let's put headphones on so I can hear what's going on. Push the But it, it does mean you've got enough room to play, you know, proper music. So, um, and although the keys are small, they're not unplayable. Um, I do make more, you know, I do catch the old um, extra notes sometimes when I'm using this keyboard. But, broadly speaking, it works really extremely well. Um, the other thing you need, of course, uh, to go with that is uh, a sustain pedal. Um, um, there's one more thing which is really important actually um, is and that is if you're going to be using um, um, if you're tr trying to do proper orchestral arrangements and things you're going to need to be able to use sliders to control controllers and things like that if you want to control CC7 CC11 um, control keys you need to use a system like Lima which allows you to use your mobile phone um, to um, to uh, as virtual faders and buttons so because obviously a, a, a mini keyboard like this has got it's got a mod wheel and a pitch bend wheel but it doesn't have all the other bits and pieces um, and sliders and things which you might actually want so I use Lima which is absolutely great I mean it's a bit of a pain to set up to be honest first time out um, but once you've got it going um, and you've got the the two two sliders on the front 
you can, can configure it any way you like. You can have buttons, you can have, you can use it um, to control the sort of uh, key switches and things like that if you like. That's a pretty good way of doing it. So um, I would go with that. You need a couple of other sort of really you know, basic things which you need to think about. You need a USB hub because you're going to need, you're going to need um, lots of extra bits to plug in. You need your keyboard to plug in. I've got one of these, a little um, a numeric keypad, because an awful lot of the shortcuts on uh, on doors and, and, and Cubase are set up to use the numeric keypad, and I don't want to have two separate, separate sets of key switches all the time. That would be a real pain. Um, it is better, or th this one's set up to be used, I can go anywhere, so I don't actually need mains power to, to use. But it, realistically, uh, if you don't have mains power, your compositional window of opportunity is going to be very, very short. So you are probably looking at setting up in the proverbial hotel room rather than on the beach. But nonetheless, um, really important thing to remember, your dongle, your license key for your, uh, for your door. Because if you are halfway up K2, um, about to write some inspiring music, and you suddenly realise you've left your Cubase key um, on, the, on, you know, back in wherever, Katmandu or something, just turning to the Sherpa and say, be a love, pop down and get my Cubase key, is not going to go down very well. So make sure you bring all the licensed stuff you need, because it, things like power supplies and stuff like that, it's really easy to leave those kind of things at home, and it will just absolutely wipe you out when you get there. You won't be able to do any proper work. You need, finally, of course, a pair of headphones. Um, I mean, these are quite large and bulky, but you can, yeah, you, can, you can use whatever you like. I mean, if I'm mixing on headphones, I tend to use open back headphones rather than these closed ones. But pretty much, you know, um, if you're just doing sort of sketching and things like that, you can work on pretty much anything. So that's it. Um, it's worth sort of saying one quick word about my bag, which I quite like. I mean, because this keyboard is a little bit too long to fit into a conventional backpack, I've got a roll top um, um, backpack, which seems to work great, actually. And um, it, it means I can carry literally everything I need in order to do um, a, a day's work in that backpack. A quick look at the template itself. Um, I'm using um, all the instruments on, on this template um, are running in contact. Um, and the reason I do that is uh, contact is excellent for um, allowing you to... It, its memory usage is very, very efficient because you can run... If you look up here, you see this little button saying purged. If, you're, if you are loading all your um, samples off an SSD, you can click that button um, and it will empty out all the um, samples from memory. It'll just stream them from the SSD. So this means that a full orchestral template is actually running in less than 11 gigabytes of, of memory. Now, I've, I'm using um, largely some fairly old samples as part of this mobile template, actually. I'm using stuff from the original East-West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra, um, the, the contact version of it. Um, I've got another mobile template which I've um, set up which runs entirely on the cine samples um, um, libraries and that's great I can get the whole orchestra in including legatos for with for less than 12 gigabytes of RAM um, so and that's you know using a perfectly decent um, selection of um, tracks I've got oh, blimey how many have I got here I don't know, about probably there's about 50 or something like that isn't there um, I mean, it's not huge numbers, but um, I've got everything I need. I've got all the, uh, you know, I've got piccolo, flute, um, oboe, clarinet, um, um, bassoon. Um, I've got French horns, trumpets, trombones, um, some percussion, pianos, harps. Uh, when it comes to the strings, I've tended to go for um, ensemble patches. So I'm using a Dargietto quite a lot. Um, um, but because... I was just trying to be a little bit more um, uh, restrained with my use of, uh, of memory. But nonetheless, this is absolutely everything you, sh you could need to write um, basic orchestral music. Um, and it, you know, it's, surprisingly, uh, it's surprisingly doable. Um, 
why don't you come back? We will do another video where I'll actually show you some sort of live scoring. Now I've actually talked through all the kit. Um, we'll do a bit of scoring using this so you can see how the whole thing works. But um, right now, um, I'm just going to go for a quick paddle. And uh, so I thought uh, I would uh, leave this, the kit set up here. I better take off my radio mic so I don't get wet. So I'm going to go for a quick paddle in the ocean behind me and I'll see you again very soon.